My name is Masahiro Date. Today, what I'd like to talk about is a history. A history of enterprises with Linux. Linux is the operating system that started as a hobby, but now is being used in many products and being developed by mainly employees of companies. So today I will talk about its history. Here disclaimer and here my experience but it's not so important for you so I will skip it. So let me tell about today's topics. There are some papers that explain the uh, phenomenon of the spread of open source software. I'd like to introduce here two books. One is Open Innovation. The other is Wojnowicz. In 1980s, superior innovations and inventions were created at the famous closed environment like Berlaboard Trees at ATT and Watson Research Center in IBM. Both turned out some Nobel Prize winners. But this book suggested more like open environment is more and more important to create innovations than close the environment with excellent examples. Encyclopedias were very expensive, used to be very expensive. That are owned by schools and rich families. But you can use Wikipedia every day, which is created and edited by tens of thousands of people around the world. I put the word Wikinomics into Wikipedia. I found these words. According to Tap Scott, Wikinomics is based on four ideas, openness, caring, sharing, and acting globally. Those keywords are all adopted by Linux community. This book shows the Linux committees as an example, but in addition to Linux, like uh, new medicine development or uh, even a uh, gold mining search, they show other examples. So, open mass collaboration created the new world of for innovation. <coughs> Linux community was born by Linus Torabolta's email to Minix working group of Usenix. On a 25th August 1991. At that time, to run the OS, Tamen Bouts, Minix is the only way to run operating system with source code cheaply. But he wanted something more for an OS, and he asked someone to help 
my worst government in his email. In a couple of weeks, developers gathered, increased, and in 1994, it's published on the internet, but it's still a hobby. In terms of uh, the approach from enterprise side, following two events were stepping stones. Luis Gassner became the CEO of IBM from the out of IBM for the first time since it's established. He declared, like from now on, IBM will expand its business based on internet and open stuff instead of propriety locked in strategy. In 2000, he announced like IBM company will spend one billion dollars on Linux next year. It's huge investment, right? This message meant like from now on IBM will seriously deal with Linux. IBM's strategy for Linux is to promote their middleware. Oh, sorry. Software business unit is uh, one of the most important and valuable business units at IBM. That generated about 30% of net income and provided the foundation of their service business. IBM has found PC business, Windows server business. Sorry, PC server business. <coughs> and some servers like S400 or OS2 were eroded by Windows. Besides Windows eroded their middleware. When Windows was introduced, customer chose SQL Server instead of DB2 for DBMS and they adopted IIS instead of WebSphere for application server. So IBM's specific strategy is they port LAN Linux on their all servers, all servers, including mainframe. And on the top of them, they run, they install their middleware with Linux. So that IBM established FSD free standard group to create the uh, standardized Linux API. LSB. LSB defined standardized API and it's complied with by running certification kit. So <coughs> LSB defined standard API for Linux. I was amazed at seeing the success of LSB. At that time, there was a rumor, like, community believed innovation was more important than compatibility. But, Red Hat, Suze, and even now, the community supported LSB. Then, IBM started Chip Hopper program. Chip Hopping, Mina 
software application that compliant LSD, they ensure to run it on every IBM server with Linux. And IBM started enhancement of Linux. In order for Linux to achieve the requirement for the uh, high-end server so that uh, they created data center Linux working group at OSDR. One of the pioneer company in terms of uh, promotion of Linux is Intel. When Intel visited telecom companies in Europe to promote their PC server, namely Wintel server. Then they are told, like, we are happy with Spark Solaris. Mm, PC server is good enough in terms of performance, but Windows is not good enough in terms of functionality for us. Linux is a much closer to the goal, but still some features are missing. Then, Intel thought, if such a features were added, they adopt Intel server. So, they started Carrier Grade Linux Working Group at OSDR. Oracle impacted some server vendors regarding our Linux. In 1996, Oracle decided, like, from now on, we only support five platforms. Five platforms are Spark Service, HPUX, IBM AX, Windows, the Linux. So, other vendors like Japanese vendors, Pyramid, DG, they had to decide to withdraw their own Linux because customer didn't buy on which they couldn't run Oracle products. So, Linux is, mm, Linux became, became the only OS that they can deliver and develop the functions that customer requested. Oracle itself started investment for Linux. The step stone was the uh, TBCC benchmark. There is a uh, benchmark in a TBCC that compete for transaction processing performance per cost. Per cost. At that time, Oracle couldn't win against SQL Server with Windows. So, Larry Ellison, CEO of Oracle, asked engineering department, isn't Oracle the best DBMS in the world? Is it? Engineering department replied, Microsoft Youth the compiler that had a special optimization function for SQL Server and they use authorization path. Authorization path are specific dedicated faster path just for OS. And Edison said, so uh, 
you are saying that if we don't have OS, we cannot win the benchmark. Is that so? Engineering department said, let's tune up Linux in order for Oracle to achieve higher performance. Then they started invention. Um, soon they changed different platform from Spark Solaris to Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And in 2007, they produced Oracle Enterprise Linux from the third Enterprise Linux. When the companies started Linux development, developers and their managers were confused because there are differences in terms of uh, development method between within the companies and in the community. CJL asked the community to develop the requirement from the district app from the uh, telecom market. But communities replied in further like you are not ah sorry we are not your slaves. If you want something in Linux, you should develop them by yourselves. And you can continue to use Spark Solaris. After that, CGR dropped some functions and provided source code for their remained functions. And <coughs> community replied, if you want some function in Linux, you have to discuss with maintenance at the community and work together, develop further in a community, according to the community way. And they received some critical comments like, your proposed real-time scheduler is too strict, so that it has a strong side effect. So, it's not so appropriate for general purpose. Their requirement aren't accepted almost at all. Eventually, called Montavist, invested by Intel, started to develop CGL functions in a Linux that was forked from the upstream. So, Montavista shipped, delivered carrier grade Linux apart from upstream. IBM started porting Linux on their old servers, including mainframe, according to their strategy. But, but at that time, mainframe had uh, more than 10 March processors and plus enhancement features. Linux is still inadequate for mainframe, so I will recommend it 
Learning relax on VM. Virtual machine, GVM. And they started enhancement for multiprocessors or hardware loss. In order to learn application or software effectively on a multiprocessor, we need a lightweight process thread that can share memory in a process. But there is a problem because other threads may rewrite the contents of memory without permission. Especially like library that written just for the uh, conventional uh, process. So in order for libraries to be made thread self, we have to provide mutex control functions for libraries. It took long time to be discussed and to be considered between IBM engineers and community engineers because there are two ways IBM implementation and community implementation. Finally, community implementation was accepted. Regarding the hardware loss enhancement, we need a, a layer that separates logical one and physical one, like virtual memory and real memory, or logical volume manager and, sorry, logical volume and physical volume. To enhance last feature for disks, we have to provide logical manager, a uh, logical volume manager, like RAID implementation. You know RAID, right? Slowly, IBM discussed, developed such function internally at IBM and they provided large source code to the community. But the community first refused it because it's too large to be reviewed or to be discussed. IBM banned internal communication so engineer had to have a communication just with the community and they restarted from a small chunk of source code and good area including finally community adopted logical volume manager like yeah developers and their managers had a, a lot of problems again because of a difference between their development method and community one. We adopted waterfall model, right? Like Functional specifications are defined and according to them, test plan was compiled and test result report is compiled and quality is evaluated and confirmed 
then development complete. Right? It's uh, like uh, defined in uh, ISO 9000 internal standard. But we had no choice but to adopt the community way at community. So even I had a severe problems. Like salespeople, my boss asked me like, show me the roadmap of Linux. Show me the functional specifications that are promised to deliver to the uh, application development team. But as you know, again, if we want to have uh, some functions in Linux, we have no choice but to work with them together. So often we couldn't persuade community way to the uh, upper managers or sales people then many forked version were created especially in an embedded area. So important thing is uh, community members are not made up of only particular company's employee. Therefore, their manager cannot manage their development without having a win and win relationship and to collaborate with them. We cannot go forward. Right? So, to do so, I'd like to introduce two examples that I experienced. We created do's and don't list with IBM engineers. Like, start to contribute with small patches rather than big chunk of source code. And, like, don't demand patch adoption by saying it is already in Solaris and other major vendors was that's a really mm, prohibited forbidden phrase in a community CGL became a Linux distribution but without ISV support because they couldn't catch up with the upstream and even now it caused some incompatibility with upstream. Red Hat Suze continue or continue to develop under or based on upstream first policy. I'd like to introduce some activity in Japan. As you can see, there is a huge Pacific Ocean between United States and Japan. So there are there were many barriers like distance, time difference, and languages. So engineers complaints or dissatisfactions were piled up. Like we couldn't have any responses 
No matter how many emails I sent to Carnet mailing list. So we set up the meeting between the Japanese vendors and NAX main maintenance to discuss a couple of issues like driver's issues, resource managers, and last features. When we discuss the topics in Japan, like something like that, if they provide drivers API like DDI driver device driver interface right? for Solaris or DKI for Windows. We don't need to provide source code. In Japan, Linux is a still minor OS, but they requested you have to read source code, you develop drivers, and you have to provide source code. But we are porting drivers from the Solaris or Windows. If they continue such an absurd request, Linux never becomes major OS in Japan. Please tell them to provide drivers compatible API with Solaris. Of course, I couldn't say that so directly, just I said, if you provide drivers API, according to them, we can develop drivers and we don't need to provide software. Before the presentation was over, Mr. Great Cage interrupted. Us. Oh, if you don't want to provide source code, you can run your driver in user land. If it's common, we share one source code within the community so that we can develop together maintenance together, uh, collaborate with each other. It's a basic principle at the Linux kernel community. Major drivers are doing so. And if it's kernel, if you encounter the problem. Everyone can support you, help you, collaborate with you. It's in closed source. We can't investigate anything. Right? Oh, and it's not so difficult to develop drivers in Linux. Haven't you read my white paper that describe as how to write drivers in Linux? Have you? Oh, you haven't read it. I already messed up, despaired, disappointed, and I thought. I couldn't have a such a meeting anymore. But at the end of the meeting, Mr. Andrew Morton gave a hand to rescue me. Like, certainly, there are some excellent engineers in Japan. And we know, often, 
they lack communication with us. So let us go to Japan a few times a year. So start it. Japan Linux Symposium. It's a very successful, effective event. At that time, the head of OSDR, Mr. Knai, he did excellent job. He requested every communication should be done in English, even a bit in Japanese. And he said, after long breaks between the sessions, we call it coffee breaks or coffee times. And at the end of the meeting, there was a party with simple catering food and drink. Japanese engineers took advantage of that opportunity. They talked with maintenance, maintenance who are willing to talk with them. Soon, yeah, we experienced a lot of positive things. In 2006, Mr. Goto from Fujitsu, he attended the Kernel Summit as the first Japanese from Japan. And participants from the Korea and China increased. In 2009, Kernel Summit was held in Japan. It's the only Kernel Summit that was held outside of North America and Europe, still. Then, DJ Fan from Fujitsu Nanjing attended as the first Chinese from mainland of China. Actually, Linux Symposium Japan or Japan Linux Symposium provided a lot of opportunity to improve communication and educate engineers and finally the contribution from Japan increased up to about 10% of kernel patches. 10% of kernel patches. And long breaks had been taken over by the Linux Foundation. Linux Foundation played key role to improve the communication in a Linux ecosystem. They started collaboration summit or end user meeting. So probably in a 2.610 to 2.620 some major functions were installed like native POSIX thread library, asynchronous IO, 64 bit addressing, and so on. Then, like uh, it's a time for crossing card. Customers adopted Linux server as a Linux alternative. Now, as you know, Linux is everywhere as a standard OS in a mobile phone, supercomputer, cloud. And more than 85% of developers are employees 
of enterprises or companies and they develop Linux during their working time. Uh, actually, in addition to the technical issues, we encountered a lot of legal issues, but today I will skip them because of time constraint. So, let me enter the today's main subject. As it said, open source software is eating the world. And in the future, even in the future, like AIG, 5G, everywhere that used in uh, TVs, cameras, rice cooking machines, washing machine, you name it. But even now you have to deal with OSS. You don't have enough time and resources to learn from mistakes, failures that have been done by server vendors, including me, in 2000. So, here, very nice document from a Linux Foundation. Open source guides for the enterprise. There are some documents here. What kind of organization you should have in a company? Or what tools there are to deal with open source? Or how to evaluate open source success? Or this one is very good how to join the community or how to attend the community. Like it shows from small chunk of source code or long breaks at events. Already as I mentioned. There are many best practices. Strongly I recommend you to read this if you want to join community. I didn't explain the problem of legal issues, but today open source is used in uh, like parts, like navigator, or in vehicle camera, in cars. So now, it's very important to manage the OSS governance in the entire supply chain, including part. Please, imagine this. Your friend decided not to use all the camcorder and gave it to you at $200 without user guide, without user guide. Also, you wanted a new one and gave it to another friend. Then, stranger pitched to you, like You violated the GPL. Therefore, you are banned from using GPL because user guide contain the location of Linux. This camcorder equipped with Linux and described the fact that 
its derivative under GPL license without both information GPL prohibited distribution of licensed software well you will be upset right what does it mean by banning from using GPL I can't use the internet I cannot get on a train or a car oh if you gave me two hundred dollars I will tell nobody oh. but it happened in Europe someone called license troll and a few million dollars by this way in Europe so again now OSS is everywhere so you have to manage OSS governance through entire supply chain okay that is for today I wanted you to know the information activity when you deal with OSS from my experience my mistakes my failures okay thank you for your listening and watching thank you